there was this foreigner who didn't speak any English and was looking for directions. And he pulled up to a bus stop near UWM where two college students were waiting for the bus. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? he asks. Students just stare at him. Parlez-vous Francais? Still, they continue to stare. Parlez Italiano? Still, no response. Habla Espanol? Nothing. Just blank stares from the students. Frustrated, the foreigner drives off. One of the students then turns to the other and says, you know, maybe we ought to take a foreign language class next semester. <coughs> Why, said the other. That guy knew four languages and it didn't do him any good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have scripture reading today about the disciples speaking in different languages, and in this case, it did do them some good. So let's explore that a little further. Will you put, pray with me, please? Mm -hmm. God, may the words of my mouth and all of our meditations today be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. So, imagine if you will. Sorry, these dumb cards. <laughs> the dog ate them. The sticky cards. They're not supposed to stick together like this. Static. I'll blame it on static. Okay, so imagine if you will, sitting in that room, sitting in this room here, and all of a sudden you hear the sound of a great wind starting to fill the room. Not the actual wind itself, it's still calm, but just the deafening sound of hurricane force winds. Much like if you were to see on TV as you're sitting in front right. of your TV. Great sound of winds. Yet everything's just very calm. There's not even a breeze in the room. Well, I know that would probably scare me a little, all of a sudden out of the blue. And along about the time, as you start looking around, trying to find out where that sound is coming from, all of a sudden, tongues and flames of fire appear in this room. Can you imagine this whole room kind of filled with fire? Mm -hmm. And then... As that fire is floating around and that roaring wind is still going on, those flames break off and they come to rest on top of your head. Right. They surround your head. Oh my goodness. Do you feel the heat from the flame? Are we afraid that we'll be burned by the flame? Mm. Are we speechless? Are we again frightened out of our wits? Now imagine as quickly as that all might happen in this room, we can begin to feel a change. We feel empowered, not afraid. We're no longer scared, but instead now we know that we are witnessing a miracle from God. We find a spirit inside of us that we've never felt before, filling us and motivating us and taking over our thoughts and our beings. We feel compelled to stand up and tell everybody how awesome this event is, these flames and this fire over our head and how we're feeling filled with some kind of power. We turn to our neighbors, or maybe we run out into the streets because we want to let others know. And now we find when we go out and we start talking with somebody in the neighborhood, we're speaking in a language that we've never spoken before. And the people who speak that language are understanding us better than Berlitz language courses, immediate. So maybe perhaps in this neighborhood we're speaking Ch Spanish or Chinese or Vietnamese. Mm. Or maybe when we go back to our homes or our neighborhoods we're speaking Polish or Italian or German. Something about these tongues of fire, they've given us the ability to reach out to others with those that we normally can't communicate with. And those people are understanding us. One can only imagine this might be how the early disciples felt during the event that we read in our scriptures. And even more so, how the crowds reacted when they heard them. Awestruck, maybe. Confused. Frightened. Disbelieving. Skeptical. But nonetheless, there it was. The disciples were filled with the <coughs> Holy Spirit in a very convincing and powerful way. And the Holy Spirit was giving them abilities that they never had before. 
to witness to the power of God in their lives. This was basically the beginning of the church at Pentecost, when God, through the Spirit, commissioned the early disciples to go forth into the world and to bring the message of God's love to all. Now, an event like that probably is not going to happen to us here, here in this room, today at this moment. I don't know, maybe it could, but probably not. But that doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit isn't surrounding each of us right at this moment and doing something wild in us. And like God, through the Spirit, and God, through the Spirit, is speaking to all of us, like the disciples. Speaking to us even through our differences and even through our different languages. Like the early disciples, today we are led and motivated by the Spirit. We are called by God to share the good news of Jesus' life and teachings and resurrection. God speaks to us through the Spirit and wants us to speak through the Spirit as well. God empowers us to act on God's behalf and speak to those who may be different from us. God wants us to prophesy and share visions and dream dreams. Now, by prophesying, I don't necessarily mean to foretell or predict things in advance like a fortune teller. And I don't necessarily mean that we should speak in tongues and utter divinely inspired declarations of the future. Unless, of course, that's something that you really can do. But by prophecy, I mean to show the places where God is active and alive in our world. To speak to those events and those coincidences that might otherwise be known as miracles. To speak to others about where the Holy Spirit might actually be guiding them, showing them the path ahead. Yeah. Perhaps our differences with others may make this extremely difficult to do. But I believe that the Holy Spirit works through our differences to help us understand one another. And God also speaks to us not only as individuals, but as a community of believers. This community of believers, MMCC. We have stories to tell. We have hearts to speak to. We have experiences as people on the margins that can give people hope. We have the ability to speak as a community about God's all-inclusive love and how we are part of God's awesome creation, Amen. just by being as God created us to be. Like the early disciples who were sent into the world by the Spirit, so too, we are continually sent into the world by the Spirit to reach those who need to hear our voices, to hear our stories, and to share our experiences. You know, as a side note, one of the best ways that we do that is at Pride every year. We engage people who drop by our booth, both young and old, single and couples, families, LGBTQS, whatever letter you want to put in there, we engage everybody. <coughs> and we get to get, have the opportunity to tell them what we believe about God's amazing acceptance and love. Right. We get to tell them that we truly believe that God has created us exactly who we are in God's image of love and compassion. We get to tell them that their image of God and their spirituality, and how they view God, is good. We get a few minutes to encourage them and tell them that there is a church and a community that accepts them for <coughs> who they are and where they are in their life's journey. Right. And not only is it good for those people to hear that message from us, but it's amazing for those of us who get to engage them. For it's in moments like that that I see the Spirit working in each of us. You know, the years I've been at the booth, I've seen many of us come into our own, discovering our gifts as we welcome and talk with people at the booth. I've seen some of us who are very, very shy 
open up and share our journeys and our struggles and our blessings with people who want to know more about who we are and where our journey has taken us. I know that those who are part of MC, MMCC at Pride come away richer for the experience and stronger in their faith. I know because that happens to me year after year, no matter who I talk with at the booth, even if it's some of the same people I've seen from the year before, that sharing and listening just makes me stronger in my belief. So, before I get back right into the regular stream of the sermon, I hope you'll consider being a part of the MMCC experience at the Pride booth this year. Join us at the booth and help us to reach out to others. Next week I'll have sign-up sheets in the back. We have lots of opportunities and times for you to be at the booth, especially if you're coming to Pride anyway. Why not spend an hour or two with us helping to share who we are with people who come by. And if you feel that you're reluctant to follow the Spirit in signing up the sheet, consider me your secondary spirit. I'll be happy to sign you up. So as I've said, we have a mission as a church, as a congregation, to let the Spirit use us and move us and send us forth. And that mission can take, mission can take many different forms as the Spirit sends us out into new and unexpected places of ministry. You know, if our ministry never changes, then our mission becomes stale. If we don't go into those new and exciting places, then the Spirit's voice becomes kind of dull. If we don't allow the Spirit to guide us past our doors, then we are truly not paying attention to how God is calling us in this world. We are going to. We will. We are bound to discover wonderful new opportunities ahead in the months to come as Reverend Tory helps us to discern our mission and our ministries. And we need to trust that the Spirit that leads us will also be leading Him to help take us to new places that we might not even have imagined possible. I know that Reverend Tory has great visions and dreams of who and what MMCC can be. That's one of the reasons why I think he is exactly right for this congregation. And I know there's others of you that feel the same way. But I also know that each of us has our own visions and dreams of what this community can be as well. We have to allow that spirit that wants to send us into new places work and lead us. We have to allow the spirit to fill us with the passion and the fire to reach others and to change the world. We have to find the time and the dedication in our busy lives to let the Spirit use us and guide us. And you know what? Some, some of the places the Spirit will lead us will, will be unexpected. And how wonderful, how wonderful is that? But in both our personal lives and in this community, we need the challenges that God and the community, we need the challenges that God and the Spirit bring into our lives to give us new life, to give us new hope, to strengthen our faith, and to help us see the many blessings that abound in our life. If we listen to the Spirit, if we allow the Spirit to work in us, then perhaps we can expect some pretty wonderful things to happen, both as individuals and as a church. We can ex certainly expect to be transformed. We will discover the unique gifts that God gives us through the Spirit Amen. to embark on our mission. Amen. We will discover how to talk and reach those we never thought we could talk with. We will discover that even in our differences and our different languages, we can talk about God's love and acceptance and perhaps change a few hearts. Amen. And we can expect to transform the world, or at least our Amen. little piece of it. <laughs> if we allow the Spirit to work in us, and if we listen to the Spirit's calling, we, can, we will be guided to where we can best serve God and be of best use. After all, God has a plan for our lives, yes, and has bestowed upon us many gifts and talents. So, if we listen to the Spirit and let it gently, or maybe not so gently, shove us in the right direction, we will make a difference. 
we will touch someone or maybe many others in unexpected ways. And we will find that we'll be able to share God's love and Jesus' gospel. Now normally, I'm not an advocate of physical anything. And I'm certainly not an advocate of people shoving us. But you know what, as my sermon title states, perhaps in this case, a little shoving never hurts. Rather than being afraid of the Spirit and where we might be led, perhaps we should embrace that shoving and allow ourselves to be pushed somewhere new and different. For God, through the Spirit, knows exactly what we can do and gives us the talents and tools to do it. Amen. God will equip us for our calling, our journey, and our mission. We might doubt God every now and then, and we might be scared of that sound of howling wind and those flames of fire, whether we see it or not. But our faith and our love of God can send us forth past that which scares us. Amen. And the good news is, is that if we trust in God and let the Spirit lead us, we will be transformed. We can't help but be transformed. We'll be able to go boldly into unexpected and new places of ministry. Sounds like Star Trek. Boldly go forth. And we will have our own personal Pentecost every time we allow ourselves to be empowered by the Spirit. And now, more than ever, as a community, we need to trust that God, through the Spirit, will lead us not only to new places of ministry, but to new beginnings as well. Amen. New beginnings and new experiences, which will enrich us as a GLBTSQ people, which will help us to grow as Christians, and which will strengthen our faith in our amazing God. Amen. It's hard to ignore the Spirit. And it's hard not to get just a tad excited when we think of what the Spirit can lead us to do. So in closing, I'm going to leave you with a little inspiration from the refrain of a song written by someone named Brenton Craig. Holy fire, come and renew. Change us to bring change for you. Heal our land, transform our world. Flood our hearts and make us bold. May we now, both old and young, speak your love in any tongue. So let God, through the Spirit, renew you, move you, transform you, and send you into the world to speak of God's love and show that God, indeed, is active and present. Amen. Amen. Amen.